what you described the connection among water quality, outdoor recreation, and economic development. Well, thanks, Perry. <laughs> Certainly those things are inextricably linked. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Iowa Agriculture Water Lines, we were founded just over five years ago by three of Iowa's leading agricultural associations, Iowa Corn, Iowa Soybean, and Iowa Pork. And these ag associations really wanted to take accountability regarding improving Iowa's water quality. And in particular, they wanted to help in implementing the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy. So IWA was created with the mission to increase the pace and scale of farmer-led efforts to improve water quality. And we were organized around helping to implement the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy. But very uh, key to our DNA or our MO is partnerships. Uh, the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy is a public-private partnership, and IWA was conceived to help lead the private component of that piece, so bringing together the private sector to help in improving water quality. And that's what we've been doing. We've created some public-private partnerships. Uh, one is the largest of its kind in the nation through a program at USDA called the Regional Conservation Partnership Program. That's now a $50 million project that has already improved conservation on three and a half million acres. And we're expecting to renew that next year, and that will actually grow to a $98 million project. Uh, we're also working on three new public-private partnerships, uh, two that we will be leading or co-leading, and one that we will be supporting. But we're hoping to bring 30 million additional dollars from USDA funding, which will benefit the North Raccoon, the Des Moines, uh, Beaver Creek, and other watersheds right here in central Iowa. We also created a public-private partnership called the Conservation Infrastructure Initiative. And, uh, you know, the motto is, join us to improve water quality and create jobs. We've identified the barriers for scaling up conservation practices from our current level of adoption to that exponentially greater level of adoption that we need in order to implement the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy. And we're really looking to get beyond the public sector cost share programs and harness economic drivers and market-based solutions while getting more private sector investment. So, we can all be creating jobs as we're improving water quality. And I wanted to read the, uh, the vision for IWA, which I wrote a little over five years ago. We envision a time when Iowa is recognized as the national leader in conservation and agricultural production, when collaborative approaches to improving water quality are pursued jointly by urban and rural stakeholders and partners and when the goals of the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy are fully realized for the benefit of all. And what's implicit in that statement is also recreation. And I'd like to expand on that vision and talk about how water quality is really linked with recreation and economic development. And I think we have a tremendous opportunity here to really all pull on the same rope in the same direction at the same time. You know, I've been very Pleased to visit with uh, Hannah Inman and the Great Outdoors Foundation. Thank you for your leadership, Hannah, and the Central Iowa Water Trails. And talk about how we can work together to bring funds to not only create great, great recreation opportunities, but also to improve water quality in a way that will really help uh, businesses uh, here in Central Iowa to recruit and retain uh, some of the best workers in, in the nation. So. You know, these three issues that you ask about are really um, woven together and inextricably linked. Thank you. Catherine? Well, thank you, Perry. I um, appreciate the opportunity to be here and obviously very excited to get to work with uh, such a great project uh, on behalf of the business community. Um, I think the way we look at it is, first and foremost, it's an economic development amenity that's needed. Uh, as you all know, we compete all day, every day for workforce. And workforce um, needs are not unique to Iowa. As we oftentimes look inward, it's like, oh my gosh, we're the only ones struggling. But I can tell you that wherever you go, and it doesn't matter if it's Colorado, it doesn't matter if it's California uh, or Iowa, everybody is struggling for workforce. So what you have, and so we're competing. 
Um, and workforce is one of the one of the three or four key elements that when you think about business retention or business expansion or business growth attraction, you have to be able to deliver on certain things. And some of those things obviously are utilities. Uh, you have to have uh, the infrastructure, and then you have to have the people. And so in order to have the people, you have to have things for people to want to live here. Because Iowa just serving islands by islands uh, is long past not being successful, right? So uh, you talked about the innate, in, you know, innate uh, need to be in Iowa. That's, that's getting smaller and smaller, right? So we have to attract and we have to do things that attract people to want to be here. You've all probably heard too, uh, the, the statistics now that a lot of young people uh, are looking for where they want to live and then they'll find the job. So when you think about that you have to have workforce to compete for business growth and attraction and if you think about you can attract the workforce uh, to be here to support that, you have to create those competitive advantages. And so many of the things that Iowa has done is, is be able to create those competitive advantages. And so now we think about outdoors and we think about the, all the amenities that we have that we need to capitalize on. And I think one of the, the things that we can compare this to is bike trails, right? Uh, we hadn't had bike trails uh, and then all of a sudden we started to build bike trails. And they started in maybe neighborhoods or maybe they started in a, in a particular space. But if you think about bike trails, they're now connecting our entire state. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of bike trails that you can go all day, all weekend, take a week. We've all heard about that, right? Um, in so many ways. But if you think about that, how those visitors that come for that bike ride are from all over. It gives an insight to what the quality of life about Iowa is. And that's, in my opinion, what this can do as well. It puts us on the map. It's a connector. I talk about how rivers are connectors. That's what this will do as well. So while we're starting in central Iowa with this, there's 86 projects, 150 miles. That's probably how we started the bike trails, right? We put a, a, a way to get our arms around it, wrap our arms around it, and now it's expanded to where it's all about Iowa. And that's what this is going to be too. It's not just, yes, we're taking a, a good lead here in, in Central Iowa, because somebody's got to do it, it might as well be us, um, and, but it will expand, and I think that that's critically important. And if you keep tying it, I, when we were visiting the other day with Perry, if you think about bikes, right, it doesn't matter where you learn to ride a bike, it's where you choose to ride a bike. And it's same with water, it doesn't matter how you learn where to enjoy the water, if you find a space that you can enjoy the water, you're so likely to go there and enjoy and then you get to expand and that's what I really think this project will do. It's a differentiator, it's a global uh, competitive advantage and it truly drives what we're all about and that is economic development, sustainability for our state for the long term. Come on, we'll be done. <laughs> 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 I'll give you good luck, Tom. I'm done yeah. now, buddy. He's got a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I get a work with her. <laughs> so I want to look at it, take a little different look from um, the West Des Moines angle, because we are part of the region, major part of the region. Uh, we we're all in. We passed the local option sales tax, which took a lot of work, and we had to go two times Dallas County, Polk County, and we sold it on half of the money was going to reduce taxes. Not half of the taxes reduced, like some people. If half of it went to reduce taxes, then another portion went to the police and fire to add to public safety, and a third component was uh, quality of life. And our quality of life uh, campaign was five waters. So what does that mean? Well, we connected our you know New Heron Lake at Raccoon River Park and the Raccoon River and the pond by the the city hall and the couple streams in the community because we're going to continue the bike or the. Or recreational trail. I have a friend. <laughs> recreational trail uh, and connect to the Great Western Trail and be a regional there because people enjoy that. And they enjoy being by water. People are always drawn to water. That's why the coast of our country, that's where the most people live. They want to be by water. And so even if it's a little bits of water that we have, you still want to make them a high quality and a good place to go. So for example, our one of our first projects is a boathouse at uh, the lake at Raccoon River. And you could go uh, 
canoe and kayak and then get on the raccoon and other people go down the raccoon. So that's going to draw more people to that. Bridges over the Raccoon River, you're going to get more access to that and uh, other loops and, and connecting. So the, the next phase is, I, I think in Iowa, not people want to be by water, I'm not sure they know, they kind of take it for granted they're not looking at the Colorado water or northern Minnesota water or some of those things. So, but we, you know, we could still make our water much better. And, and so we have to start as an example. Uh, we, we have the West Wind Waterworks, they, they're back there somewhere. Uh, we're looking at source, uh, we're going to be working with them more aggressively on protection of source water. That means going up the Raccoon River and working with folks. That means with our city on all our parks and the land we control, what can we do to be better stewards of the land to protect, uh, you know, talk, uh, walk the talk, so to speak. So uh, we could be set examples for our residents, educate them about water, and go from there. So that's, it, it is exciting, and we talk, I get the pleasure of talking to business leaders from the, the city of West Wine, major companies, and yeah, the, just what Catherine said, it's a, the competition for, uh, they need people, the competition is fierce, and so we want a really high quality of uh, life, or place to live. So we, we're, we're all in, and um, we look forward to continuing that conversation and, and, and actually seeing projects put on the ground. Good. <laughs> Take it, Ted. Uh, today is the uh, 100th anniversary of the Wine Waterworks. Uh, November 13th. <laughs> November 13th of 1919 was the first meeting of the independent board, the independent municipal utility that was, is today still the Wine Waterworks. And for that entire century, uh, the fate of Des Moines Waterworks has literally been tied to the quality of the water in our rivers. So we have been water quality advocates for more than a century. Uh, the, the challenges are, are different today than they were 100 years ago. Uh, in fact, 100 years ago, um, the water system in Des Moines was, was delivering typhoid to people's taps. Uh, well, we're way beyond that. Uh, we've resolved that problem. That's probably not a yard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That give me a shirt here. Uh, no more typhoid. <laughs> uh, uh, our barriers are we're low. On our <laughs> the uh, the challenges are different today, but they're still there. Um, everybody knows that. Uh, we are tremendous water quality advocates. But one of the things that we have noticed at uh, Des Moines Waterworks is historically uh, in Des Moines and in, in the state of Iowa, we uh, have not invited people to our rivers. Uh, in fact, we've kind of tucked our rivers behind buildings and balustrades, and even in Waterworks Park, we somewhat hid the river. Uh, we didn't invite people in. It was difficult to get onto the river. And, and if you did, it could be even more difficult to get off of the uh, we have dams that, that drown people. We have all sorts of challenges. And we feel that that separation of the people from the river has resulted to some extent in the water quality that we see in the rivers today. Uh, people in Des Moines and in Iowa haven't historically considered rivers the, the real asset that they could be. So we're incredibly excited about the opportunities that this project represents, the, the water trails, the outdoor recreation, inviting people to these resources, getting them on the water, in the water, is naturally going to uh, increase their interest in improving water quality. Uh, we realize that that's going to be a stepwise thing, it isn't going to happen overnight, but it's not going to happen at all if we keep people off the water and we keep them, uh, the rivers, out of sight. The water quality interests from a drinking water perspective uh, are different in some ways. They're similar in some ways, and they're identical in some ways to the water quality interests of this project. But we are confident uh, that this is the, the bright light right now in terms of opportunity for surface water quality in the state of Iowa, and we're excited. Well, good morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, thank you for having me here this morning. Uh, obviously, I haven't talked a lot yet. Uh, it's a little earlier than I 
uh, like to get up, but I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate uh, the invitation to be here. Um, I am new to the Des Moines area, so I'm excited to have the opportunity to meet new people in the area and uh, get involved in projects like this. Uh, I'm the current water program director at Iowa Environmental Council. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, the council is a nonprofit law and policy uh, advocacy organization for environment. We work primarily on clean water and clean energy. Uh, we have, we're the largest um, coalition of environmental organizations in the state. We have, a, <coughs> excuse me, almost 80 uh, member organizations and we have a lot of uh, individual members as well. And so uh, we obviously uh, approach this from a, a water quality standpoint, but um, we are in our 24th year. We're coming up on our 25th anniversary. Um, uh, the organization on the idea that uh, business can be a driver for uh, environmental improvements and, and really taking an economic look at the value of uh, environmental resources and the value of preservation of those resources. And so I think when you look at projects like the water trails or like outdoor recreation in general, uh, I think that's a perfect um, uh, example of how we can use valuation of that resource as a way to drive water quality improvement. Just like Ted said, uh, I think that people being disconnected from the rivers has, has led to a disinvestment in the quality of that resource. And so um, when we look at uh, our water resources across the state, you know, what are the interests in that resource? Uh, and currently, um, uh, the, the interest is a lot um, of looking at water as an externality to agricultural production. And so I think um, one thing the council has tried to do is look at a balancing uh, of economic interests in, in water resources and who has um, business interests and business uh, development interests in these resources that belong to all, all Iowans across the state. Uh, we, this summer, we're going around to recreational communities in Iowa uh, with lakes. We went to Clear Lake, we went to Okaboji, uh, we went to Creston, and we uh, really wanted to get an idea from those folks. What is the value of these resources um, to, your, to your community and to your businesses and to your livelihoods? Um, and this is personal to me. Uh, I grew up in Carroll, Iowa, uh, but my parents, uh, <clears throat> both sets of grandparents lived uh, in the Okboji area. Now my folks also live in Okboji. So I spent all my summers going up to Okboji and um, swimming and boating and recreating. Uh, I'm really excited about the Water Trails Project uh, personally because I'm excited to go zip lining and surfing and all of that. Um, but I, you know, so I understand the value of of those resources to communities like that. If you think of Okaboji, um, it's quite remote. Uh, we, uh, I got married up there and we had people from other states trying to figure out how to get there. Uh, and if you've ever tried to come to Okaboji from anywhere else, uh, it's, it's not particularly easy. It's three hours from Omaha, it's three hours from Des Moines, it's three hours from Minneapolis, it's two hours from Sioux Falls, but where do you fly, where, where does Sioux Falls get flights from? So, uh, <laughs> So, you know, you have this remote sort of oasis in northwest, very flat, very rural Iowa, and you have, uh, you have uh, small businesses, you have breweries, you have young people, you have uh, capital investments, um, you have this community that's sprung up, and the entire reason for that is those lakes that are there, and uh, the value that that community has put on those lakes and there's a reason why the water quality there is good. Um, the people up there have invested in protecting it and they protect that water quality very fiercely. And um, uh, I went up and did a, uh, uh, we went up to Okoboji and did some outreach and I did a um, three and a half mile swim race. Uh, and I can tell you that I'm very happy that the water quality was good because my face was in that water for quite a while. Um, so I, I think that those, that sort of, uh, commitment to understanding the economic benefit of that resource is is an important driver. Um, we also looked at beach monitoring uh, in those areas and, and if you have uh, say algae blooms that cause uh, toxins uh, and you have a beach advisory for two weeks and you're a you know say a coffee shop in Okaboji that uh, you have 12 weeks to make your money basically for the year maybe 10 weeks by the time uh, people go back for football in the middle of August and you have beach advisories for two of those weeks that is uh, 
critically important to your bottom line. Um, and we had uh, last year, uh, they had a they had six days where there was a no wake advisory. The, the it had flooded up there, and so uh, it was over the Fourth of July weekend, and they had no wake. And uh, I was talking to some business development folks up there, and they said that by if if it had been a day or two more, they would have really started feeling and and. It, a uh, serious economic impact. So just a few days of not being able to have that recreational tourism up there um, was was critical to that to business development. So and I tell these stories uh, mainly because I think that in the Des Moines area and central Iowa uh, this is very exciting uh, and water quality is very important and I think these things can go concurrently. Um, we can make water quality improvements and um, and also have the opportunity to uh, recruit and retain talent. Uh, I'm also, I think I'm approaching the point where I can't really describe myself as young anymore, but I would say that, uh, you know, people, it, my peers, <laughs> my peers and people younger than me, you know, I have seen people like me who grew up in Iowa, went to high school in Iowa, went to public, I'm an uh, alumni, alumna of uh, the University of Iowa um, twice, uh, but, you know, I've watched a lot of my peers go to Colorado, go to Minnesota, go to the West Coast, um, go to the Southeast, and a lot of it is because of outdoor recreation, because they want to be in a place that is fun to live. And so I think this kind of project, outdoor recreation, uh, can really be a driver to to bring people back. And I always argue that Iowa has a lot of a lot of great things we just don't invest in them so people don't know about them people don't think of iowa as a place that has a lot of natural beauty and outdoor opportunities uh, but it should be and i think it can be if we if we invest in that 